Hello, this is Tolu Victor. Today, we will learn how to convert our single select combo boxes into radio buttons. We will also learn how to convert our multi select combo boxes into check boxes. By default, our apps forms use combo box controls to collect data for choice columns, multi choice columns, and yes no columns. In cases, where the options are many, it makes sense to leave the default combo box controls. But where there are just two to five values, converting to radio buttons or check boxes might be a better option. Some users don't always want to click and scroll to access values on your app. Ain't nobody got time for that. And if you stick to the end of the video, we will also learn how to limit our check boxes to a maximum number of selected values. With that being said, Let's get into the video. I have created a simple app for the purpose of this exercise. It is an app that creates products, basically writing into the product table, which is housed on Dataverse. So we have a form for adding the product and a gallery where we can view this product. This form also serves as the view form where we can view existing products. Then we basically copy the item value of the drop down into the radio control. So the item value is what we are copying. So let's control alt this and we select our radio and paste it there. And that's basically it. So one thing we need to do is to then Copy the name of the drop down. That is the combo box. Copy the name of this. Then you delete it and then paste that exact same name into for the radio. The reason why we are doing this is if any other controls on your app are connected to that combo box, it won't break since we've already changed the name. Just note that you need to delete it first before renaming. If not, the whole purpose is defeated. And let's just resize this to what we want to. And since we want this to be horizontal, to make it horizontal, all we need to do is to go to the layout property, the layout property, and change it to layout dot horizontal. That makes it horizontal. And that is basically all that is there to it. So let's go to the other tab. So if you want to see how I created this tab-like functionality, so it is a component that is connected to the form. If you want to see how I built it, I'm going to link a video up here somewhere there so you can watch how to do this on the forms also. So we also have another field where we want to convert to radio so first thing select into the data card then select the radio control copy the item value of the combo box and paste it into the radio then resize as needed before resizing copy the name of the combo box then you delete it then Paste the value and rename the radio button ideally. Then you can stretch this to let's just resize that to fit our form. We we'll just add a little bit of add 140. Yeah, so that's that. Then this is a yes no column. So the yes no column basically works the same way. All you need to do is adding the radio button copy the value of the item paste it and then get the name of the combo box delete it and then rename the radio control and for this one we are going to set it to be horizontal 
What's going on here? Okay, it's horizontal, but we need to expand it. Yeah, so if you are changing the value of the layout and it's not selecting, let's make sure it has enough width to be able to display in horizontal form. I totally meant to show you that. Stop the cap. <laughs> Here, yeah. so now converting combo boxes into checkboxes. To do that, we are going to leverage a gallery and a checkbox control. So the first thing you need to do is to add a horizontal gallery. So let's make it a vertical gallery actually. Basically, just add in the gallery. And if you add in the gallery and it's outside the form, all you need to do is to select this cuts and go into the data card where you want to paste so then click this and click paste and now it will be inside the data card so i'm just going to make this a black data card now and then i'm going to set the template size to about 50. let me bring it down a bit let me resize it a bit yeah so the next thing we are going to do Similar to what we did for the radio, we would copy the item value of the combo box and set that to the data source of our gallery. Once that is done, the next thing we need to do is inside our gallery, inside our gallery, we put in a checkbox control. And for the checkbox text, all we need to do is to set it to this item with value. So that is going to use the item value of the choice. And we can set the wrap count to, to three. So the wrap count is basically what controls how many checkboxes are on each line. So let's set it to three. So three are on one line. All right. So the next thing we are going to do is to leverage a collection that controls, that basically captures the selected checkboxes. So let's select our, let's select a checkbox, then on select of this checkbox, so on check of this checkbox, what we want to do is to collect Let's call it um, form, form call, guys, form, form colon underscore age classification. So name it appropriately. So in cases where you have multiple um, columns where you need to have this functionality. And for the item, all we need to do is to say title will be set to this item its value and then we close our so what this does is to create a new collection record every time you check this checkbox inside the gallery then on 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 check of the checkbox what we want to do is to remove that item sorry that record from the gallery so say remove if remove if the collection we are using is form call and that's called each classification and what's the condition if the title is equal to this item dot value so the last thing is to connect this collection that we created form call underscore each classification to our combo box so we go to the default selected items of our combo box and then set it to that we set it to that our collection we say for all then our collection form call age classification we then say the value that we should that we want to append to this combo box is the title column 
of our collection. I'm going to close this. And then to test it out, see as we click them, it is appending them into our combo box. And if you uncheck, it removes them. If you uncheck, it removes them if you add them. So that is basically baseline of how that is going to work. So the next thing we need to do is just to make this invisible and then resize the gallery accordingly. And that is it. And so another thing we need to do is to clear this collection on visible of this screen. This is so that the form will be reset anytime they make a submission and come back into the screen. Else, they'll be seeing past entries from previous form submissions. So to do that, we go to the unvisible property and clear the form. Sorry, clear the collection. So clear form for oh, underscore classification. So that will clear the form. Clear the sorry, clear the collection. So if we were to go to the home page and come back here, it will now be cleared. That is fine. So the next thing is to test the form itself. And let's just open it in play mode. So we would set the product name to baseball apps. And let's set a product description to baseball caps for adults. And let's say wholesale. And for our product manager, we use the name of an absolute legend. Then let's select these ages. Let's select four. Let's select it to be a public product and it is available. And let's set the price to let's see if it's a reserve. You submit, so now you can see our value or our record has been added to our table. You see our checkbox column here with the values that we selected there. So the next thing now is to view our record inside the form. So let's click this button icon here. So the first thing you notice is that this radio buttons and check boxes are empty. So what we need to do is to set the default value of those to parent the default. So it will get the values from the data card. And for this parent of defaults, of this, so basically all you need to do for the radio buttons is to set it to parent of default. But for the checkboxes, it's a little bit different. So what you do is to check if the form mode is equal, is not equal to new. So that means it is edit or views. So if it's any one of those values, then you should populate the form collection based on the your know, multi-choice column. So to do that here, what we'll do is to say if was our form name if form sorry if form form what's form mode no, the mode actually that's mode is not equal to new so it's not equal to form mode dot new then let me make this then we say for all for all um then we check our the record that is selected that is gallery gallery three so the name of our gallery is gallery three so we check gallery three dot selected for all gallery three 
dot selected dot our column is age classification we want to collect a new record for each inside our collection inside our collection so collect form call the value sorry the title and you know the value the title will now be equal to this record dot value it was wrong here we forgot to put a comma here and then close our if and that should be fine so now let's test it out again. If you go to view products, select this here. Now it is already selected. So let's say we remove all of them and maybe leave only 19 to 25 and submit. Now only 19 to 25 shows here. And if we come into the form again, we'll see only 19 to 25 is selected nice so for the last part of the video we will be learning how to limit the number of selections in our checkbox control so basically if you want if you want to limit the number of selected items to maybe four so here we have a maximum of six selections and you want to limit it to four how you implement that functionality so to do that let's select our checkbox and then in the uncheck property that's this one we are going to do an if condition so if count rows if count rows of our collection let's copy the collection one pro one is to if classification is greater than four what we want to first do is to notify You can't select more than four items. And we set the notification type to error and we set a timeout to three seconds. So that's 3000 milliseconds. And then use a semicolon since it's still part of the true part of the um, if statement. Then we'll say, remove what are we remo from where are we removing from our collection and we say the item we are removing is the last item that was added so last form called underscore age classification and then then we just close our if statement so to reiterate we first notify them that they can't select more than x items and then we remove the last item we added. So to test that, let's see. Select, we'll just select four. So now we've selected four. And if we want to select an extra one, it is it selected, but it removes it almost immediately. And then you can see the error at the top. You can't say more than four items. And um, yeah, I think I should change that. You can't set more than a little typo there. So yeah you can customize this based on the number of items you want and you can also put in your your error text here and you can do other other querying based on this so thanks for sticking to the end of the video i hope by now you'll be able to convert your combo boxes into check boxes or radio buttons if you have any questions or comments please let me know down below and if you found this content helpful please like share and subscribe and until next time bye